Hi Virgo, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your February 2022 tarot reading. This is a reading for all Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Thank you to all of you for your support. I appreciate everything you do and I send you love and positive energy every single day. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. You can watch a new reading. Fridays are always a general reading. Mondays are something different every week. So this week's reading will be a more detailed Celtic Cross style reading. Other weeks it could be a love reading or I do quarterly readings or different oracle cards. So if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right. What advice do you have for Virgo? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Virgo need to know, please, for the best and highest good of all concerned with Virgo? Messages for Virgo, please. All right, so we will start off here with a tarot, and then we'll do the Angel Answers Oracle cards. Current situation, we've got the Seven of Wands. The immediate influence is the Four of Swords. Now, down in your subconscious, we got the Nine of Swords. We'll talk about that. You've got the Magician in the distant past, the Lovers in the more recent past. The Two of Cups is the energy coming towards you. You're represented by the Knight of Pentacles. The situation or uh, person you're attracting is the Ace of Pentacles. You've got the Empress and your hopes and fears. Seven of Pentacles in the outcome. Well, I feel like you've got, you've got something coming in. Like you re It's time to sow, you know? You reap what you sow. Um, I, God, I love this reading. You've got... Five major arcana here, right? Yeah, that looks good. You've got judgment and the wheel of fortune here in your clarifiers, plus the ten of pentacles. So um, you've got Gemini here. You've got earth, air, fire, water, all the elements. So with this, we've got the archangel. We've got two archangels, Gabriel and Raphael. Um, but with the, you know, the judgment card, that's self-mastery. It's the second to last major arcana. And the Major Arcana are all about the, the soul's journey based on the fool. And all of the, each card is an experience your soul has to experience to evolve. And so here we're talking about liberation. This is a, a realization of letting go of anything small. You're not here to play small. And so you get a release with the judgment card. It's really a new perspective, a fresh view of life. And so it allows you to, to let go of all the limitations of the ego, any hangups that other people put on you. They're not yours to carry forward here. And so you rise up and it's all about celebration. It's that freedom and really feeling like you've got self-mastery, you know, it's that, that wonderful life mastery. And so the Wheel of Fortune too, I feel like you've got a turn of events that brings you there. There's something here, it may be, it feels very, you have a very a positive, a wonderful reading for love. Um, and so with the Wheel of Fortune, if you haven't met anybody, you're going to have a turn of events here that brings in somebody that it's like a life-changing kind of relationship here. But the Wheel of Fortune, it's always for your best benefit. It's always something that brings in fortunate events. And so the wheel itself represents a portal into the divine. It's high vibration, all this energy. You've got this Hermanubis here, the serpent on the side, and then the, the waves and that. It's high vibrational energy, so it's bringing in positive things. Some of you, you've got a turn of events in money and career. You may get unexpected money. I get that several times. Um, so with the Ten of Pentacles, it's a new cycle that brings in abundance, prosperity, wealth. Anybody here that's looking for career advancements, this is the energy that gives you a boost. Others of you, though, I do feel like you've got a, a great energy for your home life, like your family, really building that up and bringing in great harmony in every area of your life. So it just feels right. Like, this is exactly what I've asked for. Here it is right now. So with the Four of Swords and the Seven of Wands, this is kind of an interesting mix. Sevens are generally about successful conclusions. Um, wands, of course, are expansion and growth. This one is like that conquering spirit. You don't give up with this, but I do feel like they're trying to tell you, you've got to get a measure of meditation, of you know, really being back to center, because sometimes with that Seven of Wands, 
It can almost be like browbeating or force manifesting. So you keep pushing, you get something to happen, but then it's not sustainable because it's just, it was too much ego and force involved. But with the Four of Swords, that allows you to take that break. It allows you to take care of yourself, mind, body, spirit connection, and really get back to center, meditate. And so there may be something here too. There's a bit of a pushing against with the Seven of Wands. If you've had something with career, I do feel like you have a turn of events here. It could be somebody who leaves. If it's somebody like you feel like you keep getting stopped by something that seems sort of bureaucratic, like it's somebody higher up or a group of people that are implementing rules and things that are stopping growth and expansion. I do feel like something about that gets removed and it allows you to move forward. So with the Nine of Swords here, the Nine of Swords is almost like needless worry. And some of you may be prone to that. Um, you know, they this is the card where they try to tell you, you don't need to worry about anything. You've got this quilt. He's got this quilt over him. That's all about protection. It's the 12 Zodiac and these red roses for desire. So there's a, you know, the black in the background, it indicates ignorance and kind of a, a too much thinking, but it's like thinking on things that aren't real. It's like predicting, you know, fear as future events appearing real. It's kind of like living in this space where this is not even anything that's actually happened. It's way too much thinking. And so if you're prone to a lot of worry, I do feel like they're trying to heavily encourage meditation throughout the reading. Meditation and really being in that place of knowing the universe is working with you. You are a co-creator. And so you do have power in your own life. Sometimes we make decisions that bring in an adverse reaction in our lives, but I can still say, hey, I did that. And that allows me to have some power over what's happened. Now we love the magician. I mean, you've got a great reading when you start to bring in things like the magician, the lovers, and the empress. I mean, especially for people that are looking to have a family, you've got great aspects for fertility here, but you've really got, this is manifesting that dream life, the great relationship, the great social ties, abundance, money. I mean, it's great. So with the magician, if you, if you, you know, he's got that ancient um, Gnostic symbol, that infinity symbol that tells you to turn thoughts to things. He, his principle is though, hermetic principle is know thyself. When you know yourself, you know the universe. And so for somebody here, I feel like you've done a lot of spiritual development and understanding how to use your conscious mind to influence the subconscious over here. Um, so this is very important for you. You're bringing, you know, heaven to earth here. So you're pulling things towards you. You're a master manifester in this energy. So we always want our point of attraction to be something positive. Our thoughts create our feelings, but our feelings are the secret. So if I'm thinking a bunch of stuff that's creating the nine of swords anxiety, I'm going to attract situations like it that just create more of this. So with the magician, I do feel like if you've got some kind of creative idea, like you're looking to, you know, your work life does look really good, but if you're looking to do, you know, make some kind of a move here, it's like some kind of a maybe unconventional thing, an idea, or maybe it's a move in career or even moving out on your own. Um, this is the kind of energy where you'll do it, but it is an energy where they tell you to keep your good ideas to yourself until they're fully manifested. So being selective about who you tell. And the magician won't be tricked. The magician is not stage magic. It's like the opposite. It's getting rid of illusions so that you can see things and know what your next move is. And so with the lovers here, again, another archangel, you've got Adam and Eve in the garden of good and evil. But their attention, their focus, Adam's is on his, this is the conscious mind, is on Eve, on the subconscious, and how that's influenced. And then on the, her, her attention is the divine. So it really is being focused on source energy, attracting through the eyes of source. Now, in terms of practicality, this is a card that tells you to pay attention to dream interpretations. It also is a card that's a relationship that changes the way you see love, and especially with the Two of Cups. You've definitely got a wonderful partnership here. It's an energy of beauty and harmony and a you know a heart that's full. So I feel like whoever you're attracting here, maybe another earth sign. You've definitely got a heavily earth um, energy here, Taurus, Virgo, Cap. 
And I feel like they're really going to get you and understand you. And if you do have, you know, we've all, we're fallible as human beings. We all have certain little foibles and hangups. I feel like they're going to be able to kind of whatever yours are, and I'm not picking on you, but they're going to be able to adapt to those. I mean, it's just going to be a nice fit where they're not looking to find and critique problems in you. You know, so some of those things that we do that sometimes our, you know, territory that we navigate in relationships, it's going to be easy with this. So the two of cups comes in, you definitely have a partner for life here, somebody who it feels like when you're together, it's a true partnership. Twos are all about partnerships, by the way. And this one is that partnership of love, real love, sincerity, integrity, trustworthiness. You have somebody here that you can completely trust. There's no hidden agendas. There's nothing you need to look out for with this. It's very pure. And it comes from a place of just wanting to be in love with you, really. I mean, it's not even just being in the idea of love. It's being in this relationship. They're all in with this. And so even in a career, if that's what you're asking about, it's also that high level of compatibility where you're all in. There's nothing that, you know, There's you're not looking around at other jobs or trying to you know, be recruited somewhere else. You're all in and wanting to go forward with this. So with the Knight of Pentacles, this represents you. This Knight of Pentacles brings in a great dose of stability, but it's conscientious energy. So you don't make rash, sudden movements here. It's measure twice, cut once, I always say. You think things through clearly and you make your moves based on reason, based on really wanting to build your life up so you don't do stupid things in this energy where you have to go back and do damage control. It's very well thought out. It's planning for the future. It's long-term success though, financially and long-term success in a partnership, okay? So anything with partnerships, you've got it multiple times. You're a wonderful partner to have. You're detail-oriented, you're dependable, and here you are. This is an energy of service too. And some of you, I do feel like you have a real facility for that, helping other people out, not looking for things in return. And, you, you know, and again, you're not looking for anything in return, but you're going to get it back. Okay. Other people around you see that and, and it, it builds your life in a really good way. So with the Ace of Pentacles being in the situation that you're attracting, you've got a new resource opening up. This is a new chapter. It's definitely a big bonus in money. And so it brings in stability, but pentacles too are all about manifesting. So somebody here, if you're looking to buy a home, it's getting the home that you want or even a little better. It is a card though of feeling wealth, feeling security. It's initiation, so it's a new beginning, but it goes long term and you know, in accordance with the other cards that are here. You're manifesting and in, in multiplying. Now, in terms of the physical body, too, this can be a new chapter with your physical body that brings in renewed health. And even more, I feel like somebody, it's more flexibility, more stamina, just more. And, and it's just more, okay? So with the Empress being here, I always point this out. She sits on this, you know, this uh, pile of luxurious pillows. She is the multiplier of forms, ideas, creativity, imagination, fruitfulness, right? We say judge a, fruit, a tree by the fruit that it bears, not the fruit that it talks about. This is bearing everything you've wanted. She's luxury. And of course, she is the mother of the tarot. She represents fertility, growth in all areas of your life. It's an energy too where you're going to attract great people into your life, Virgo. You're going to attract people that will be lifelong friends. And as much as you help other people, you're going to start to see it in return where people want to help for you. She's a bit she's a bit pampered, okay? She's got an emperor who takes care of her every need. She doesn't really have to do much, um, but just, you know, love, just love and be in abundance. So with the seven of pentacles, I mentioned before, I think sevens are about successful conclusions and victories. So you're about to get a big payoff here. In terms of money, you've got, like I said, you've got a door opening that's going to bring in a big increase in money. And it's also though, you being able to buy something that you've wanted. Those of you that are looking for a house, it's definitely here. Um, others of you, though, if you've been waiting, it is coming in. Money grows on trees in the tarot. And so it's your time to manifest. It's your time to reap 
what you put in. And so with that seven of pentacles, there might have felt like there was a bit of a delay. You know, he looks at the tree like wondering when is this going to happen? It really is happening now. It's available now. But I do feel like in terms of a relationship, you have something here that's growing and moving forward. In terms of career too, there's definitely money here and new avenues for you. So if you're trying to do something on the side, um, in addition, it's going to turn into more. All right, let's see what the uh, angels have to say here. Look for a sign, okay? They're all around you. Those signs and synchronicities. Meditation brings answers. We did talk about that. Uh, recovery, too. Okay, so if there's anything with the physical body, you're starting a new chapter that's going to bring in renewed health. They say perfect timing here. And you've got don't stop. So keep going forward, Virgo. I love you and I'll be back again soon.